In this video, I will work through a quick demonstration on how to use layer masks to cut out the background of an image in Photoshop. Keep in mind that using layer masks is a non-destructive technique, meaning that you can easily go back and make changes without actually deleting or changing any of the pixels in the original image. Start by opening your image in Photoshop. There are many ways to accomplish this, but I'll just right-click on my image and go to Open With and choose Photoshop from the list. If Photoshop doesn't show up in this list, you may need to go to Choose Default Program and go out and browse and find Photoshop. Now I've already done this with mine, so it showed up in my list, but let's get it open in Photoshop. There we have it. Next, we need to find the Layers panel in Photoshop. It's typically over here on the right side of our screen. Now, for some reason you don't see the Layers panel, you can always go to Window and come down to Layers. You notice mine has a check mark. That means it's already showing in my interface. But if I get here and it's not showing, simply go to Window and the Layers, and the Layers panel is now active. Next, we want to look in the bottom of the Layers panel, and there's a few icons coming across here. We want to locate the one that it is Add Layer Mask, and it's right here. So I'm going to click on it once, and notice right here in my layer, I now have a mask added to that layer, this little white thumbnail here. Next, we need to activate the brush tool that we'll use to paint our mask with. So over here in the tool panel, find the brush tool, Make sure you don't accidentally get a hold of the History Brush Tool. We want the Brush Tool right here. And now let's look down at the bottom of the Tool Panel, down in this section here. Right here we see the little color swatches here. We want to click on those. That's the foreground and background default color swatches. Now, now you'll notice that the foreground color is set to white and the background color is set to black. Let's use the Switch Foreground and Background icon here. And now black has moved to foreground, and white has moved to the background. Before we begin actually painting the mask, we need to double check that the mask is actually active in the Layers panel over here. Notice that our white mask here has these little brackets around it. That means that it's active. If by chance I clicked on the thumbnail of that layer, notice that the brackets now have moved to this thumbnail, meaning that is active. If I were to be on my paintbrush tool and start painting right now, I'm actually painting on top of my image, which is not what I want to do. I'm going to undo that. I want to make sure my layer mask is active to activate it again. And then if I come over here and click and drag, I'm now painting on my mask. And now you can see that I can hide part of my image and I can leave part of my image showing. I'm going to undo that as well. Another thing I want to look at before we actually begin working on our mask is let's look at how to adjust the brush size and the hardness value. Make sure your brush tool is active, and then up here in my Options panel, there's a section right here. If I click on this down arrow, I can adjust the size of my brush and the hardness value of my brush, how hard or soft it is. So I'm going to adjust the size, and then I'm going to hover my cursor over my canvas and see the size of my brush. Now if I go smaller, it appears smaller. If I go larger, obviously larger. Now the hardness value is a little harder to see. We can't visually see that much, but once I start painting with it, you can see that I can have a very soft edge if I go all the way down to zero. Undo that. Or I can have a very crisp hard edge to that brush. You will need to adjust the hardness values and the size values of your brush as you work on your image. If your image has a very soft area, use a soft brush. If it has a very crisp, hard area, use a hard brush. Just take some experimenting. Now let's actually start painting on our mask. So my mask is active in my layers panel. I've selected my brush. My foreground color is set to black in this case. I'm going to come up here and adjust the size of my brush. And I'm going to leave the hardness value at 100 right now. And I'm going to come out here and paint. Now if I paint with black, what I'm doing is I'm actually hiding part of my image. Undo that. And then experiment painting with white. 
Well, if I paint with white, nothing's happening because I'm revealed, all of my image is revealed. So I'm going to go back to black. I'm going to hide his face here. And let's say you're painting along on your mask and you make a mistake. Well, of course, you have undo to work with, but you also might want to just swap your foreground color to white and come back and paint, and it will come back and it will reveal that part of the image. Just do a little playing around right now, not worrying about being too precise at this particular moment, but just get a feel for how it works. Now that you know how layer masks works, it is up to you to take the time and make very precise, realistic cutouts of your images. Key points are to make sure that the layer mask is active in your layer panel, paint with black to hide parts of the image, paint with white to reveal parts of the image, paint with a hard or soft edge as necessary, and don't try to do everything with just one brush. You'll need to adjust the size and hardness values as you work on cutting out your image. Typically, I go around the outside of my image with a small brush, changing the size and hardness as necessary, and then finish it off with a large brush in the larger areas. Don't forget to save your work as you go along. I suggest that you save your cutouts in the native Photoshop format, which is a .psd file format. This format will support the transparency that you will need in this situation. My original image was a JPEG, but the JPEG file format does not support transparency as I need. With a little time, effort, and practice, you can make quality cutouts of your images for use in multimedia projects. This is a skill that every Photoshop user needs to have, so if your cutouts need some improvement, make sure you put in the time and practice to hone this skill.